Hello everyone. Welcome to the next training session of SAP New Jewel Accounting. Now today's topic is the remaining configuration steps in the New Jewel Accounting which includes various document types to be defined in interview and the general ledger view and then the segments. So we'll take up each of them one by one. Let's move on to the first part for today that is document type in new GL. Document types are used to differentiate the business transactions and to manage how the document are stored and how the numbers, document numbers are generated from the document types. An accounting document has two possible views in the new GL accounting. One is the entry view and the second is the, the general ledger view. Entry view is the view of how a document appears in the sub ledger view or the sub ledgers like vendors, customers, assets that is AP, accounts payable, account receivable, asset accounting or taxes part. Whereas GL view the view of how a document appears only in the general ledger part. Now let's let's elaborate this and have further clarity on what does this particular entry view and GL view refers to. So the first is the document type. As we already discussed number of times that the document type basically differentiate the different nature of business transactions. On the basis of different business transactions, their nature, there are different document types which have been defined. Even in the last training, we, we discussed how the document type is used in the new GL accounting and even there we saw that there are different document types for different nature of transactions. Like for asset purchase, there is a different document type for depreciation, for bank reconciliation, for payment, for receipts, for invoices. Uh, different natures have got their different document types which is a two character it could be alphanumeric or alphabetical anyways so and all these document types have got their number range to be assigned and on the basis of that document type the document are issued a number to that particular document which is posted in the SAP system So this documentation describes the special procedure for setting up the document types for new general ledger accounting. So when the new general ledger accounting is activated, a financial accounting document gets two views in the new GL. The one is the entry view and the second is the GL view as said. The entry view as said it's the entry view document show you the document in the sub ledger views. So if a particular invoice has got vendors or customer in it, so it will reflect you the vendor or the customer name or the their particular customer or the vendor code for that particular document. It will not show you to which ledger it has been posted to. Whereas when you go to the general ledger view, it only shows you that which particular ledger has been debited or has been credited in the document. So we'll see that how this has been done. So uh, that is what we need to see over here that how the different document type numbers are assigned to the entry view and to the GL view. So if we move on to this particular part in the general ledger accounting, the document type defines for the document in the entry view needs to be different to those for the documents in the general ledger view. It says that the, the number range has to be different, the, the document type which will be used in the entry view and in the general ledger view should be different from each other. Now in the configuration if you if you move on to it has got basically three configuration steps. The first is define document types for entry view. Then define document types for 
entry view in a ledger and define document type for general ledger view. These are the three different document types which we need to configure into the SAP system so that their respective views can be looked and accordingly the document can be posted in the system. So this is the, these are basically three different configuration steps within the document type in the new GL. And apart from that, we'll be looking after to defining the segment, how a segment can be defined in the SAP system. So let's move on to each of these configuration steps one by one. Moving up to the first, that is define document types for entry view. So the document types for entry view is basically defined for leading ledgers and the standard document types are already defined in the system. So standard document type own the document type. So we will be using the same standard document type for the leading ledger. We don't need to create any documents, any document type over here. So what we do is we make the document type settings for posting in the entry view that affect all the ledgers including the leading ledger in this part. For your leading ledger you can use the document type delivered by SAP that is the standard uh, document types already defined and that is what we will be using. We will be just going through that particular document types and this is the same document type which we have uh, also been covered in the document splitting part. The same document types are defined over here. So let's see how it can be looked into. The path is there on the screen to you. You need to go to the financial accounting new, then financial accounting global setting new to document and then document type and then document type define document types for entry view. So let's move on to the SAP system. We first need to execute the transaction SPRO. Enter. SAP reference IMG. Then we need to go to the financial accounting new. Expand. Then financial accounting global setting. Expand. And then you can find over here the option document. Within document you need to expand it and you will find document types. So you can see now within the document types there are three different steps. First is defining the document type for entry view. That is our first configuration within the document type for new GL. So let's see how this has been done. What you need to just, we will not be doing anything in it. We will not be defining any document type because this is the same as predefined into the SAP system. So that will be used. So if you go and execute this first config, you can find the different document types already defined into the SAP system as a default standard. So there are different document types as you can see. You can go down further. Again, they are further down to it. A number of different document types have been created. You can go further down. There are for invoices, for payment, for goods receipt, for goods issue, for inventory document, for net goods receipt, sample documents, client funds, depreciation posting. So huge number of different document types already defined as you can see. And this is what has to be used in this particular first step. So for defining the document type for entry view, we don't have to do anything whatever is default or is predefined by SAP as a document types the same will be used into the SAP system. So once this has been done you can go back you have checked it out so what that is what you need to do you just need to check this particular step and once this particular step has been checked that is all about in this and that is what the care has to be taken by you. So now we can move to the next configuration step that is define document type for entry view in a ledger. In this we define the document type for postings to non-leading ledgers. Now there comes the difference. When we, we discussed about the earlier one the document type for entry view that includes the document type for all the ledgers including the leading ledger. But now if you want that the certain 
the documents to be posted in the non-leading ledger also and this would have document types with it. So you need to define document types for non-leading ledgers under this particular step. So for your non-leading ledger you only need to define separate document types for documents in the entry view for those ledgers that are used as a representative ledger in a ledger group. So if you got a non-leading ledger and once we create a non-leading ledger the system automatically creates a, led, a, a ledger group and every ledger group has got a representative ledger if you remember. We discussed it in when we did the the ledger part. So you need to define a document type so that those particular documents can be can have their entry view for non-leading ledger part. So to define the document type for posting to non-leading ledger, we we need to proceed to the SCP system and let's see how we can define the different document types in it. So again, the path is the same. You need to go to financial accounting new to financial accounting global settings and then to documents and document types. The very next step is define document types for entry view in a ledger. Now if you go and execute this particular step, it asks you the ledger. And over here when you, it asks you for the ledger, it basically refers to the non-leading ledger. So let's search for the ledgers, the non-leading ledger part. We can go for F4 and you can see now A1 and A2 are the two which we defined. So we can select A1 over here and then we can click on to OK, continue. So once that's been done, you can see now on the screen that the ledger A1 does not have any document type or number range assigned to it. And that is what we need to assign. We need to set up a document type for all the different postings related to the ledger A1 and assign a unique number range to the document type for each non-leading ledger respectively. So now let's see how we can add on to this. So to add, we need to uh, go to the new entries. So you need to click on to new entries and then you can find the options will become open to you. So you need to go and select a type. For that you can go and you can select over here or you can you can use the F4 function 4 key on the keyboard and it will give you the list of document types. So you can see over here on the screen. Now you can decide the document types over here which needs to be used. There is no specific document type for this. Now normally what we can use it is we can use SA for GL account document and suppose I take it over here as SA. Now we need to define the number range. We need to assign a number range. So to assign a number range we also first need to define the number range as well. Now to define the number range we we have to go back. So let's move back, cancel it with the red cross. No, not to save. So to create the number range if you can go down you will find the options over here document number ranges. So within this we need to create the number range. So if you go to this entry view, because we are in the entry view part, so we need to go to document in entry view, expand, and now you can find over here, define document number range for entry view. So to define the number range, we need to go to this step. You need to go to document number range, then documents in entry view, and then define document number ranges for entry view execute this step and it will take you to the next screen where we define the number range. So you need to take the company code first. The company code is 1200. Now to 
to define a number range we need to go to the intervals click on to the intervals and you will find a number of different number ranges already defined okay okay so what we can do is we can use the same number range let's check it again so out of these different number range we can use any of them suppose we are going to use 01 for one of the document type so this is where you need to create to create the number range suppose we create a number range again so to create the number range we need to go and click on to this plus interval put the number suppose I take the number as SA I take the year as a fiscal year and then you can go and you can define the number range from and two options as I have taken up over here on the screen now go to insert so it says enter interval without overlap okay So now let's see. Okay, it says the number ranges. So let's uh, we take it as. So this is what the number range we have assigned. You can go down and you can see the number ranges even. And over here we have added the number range as on the screen so it's up to you what number range you want to have and then you can go and you can save this screen so the number range is SA is the number so now we can go back again and now we can go back to our configuration step define document type for interview in a ledger execute select the ledger a1 that is the ledger non-leading ledger that we have defined continue and now to add the document type over here we need to go to new entries and then we can take our document type essay and now on the other side we can define the number range so the number range can be a numeric one it could be an alphabetical one as you have so we have created right now we have defined a number range SA where we assign the number ranges from 1000 to 1099 so that is what you need to do you need to take the type and the number range similarly you can have number of different document type assigned to it suppose I can have another one as well over here like suppose I take it as AB and I can assign the number range as 01 to it so you can have multiple document types can be assigned over here and those particular document types needs to be assigned to the number range at the same time over here on the screen so this is how you would be defining the the document type for non-leading ledger at the same time you need to assign the number ranges to the same as well so this is how you need to do it and once this has been defined you can go and you can save the screen and as you click on to the save okay it gives some error all right that means the number range has to be something different all right okay let's go back to the same screen so it says that the number range has to be unique so like SA to SA and again to a B document type can be used with SA and now we can go and we can save and you can see now it has taken up the request within the request number so what it says is the number range should be unique and it should not be repeated from the first configuration step that's what is the second configuration step to be looked in so within a ledger group the representative ledger determines the document type and the number ranges applied so if you could remember the representative ledger we discussed 
in our second uh, training session of new GL where we discussed about the representative ledger which checks the various uh, the the posting periods whether it's open and it also checks the document type for the number range to be allotted to the document posted in the system so each of the ledger whether it is a leading or a non-leading ledger should have a document type with a unique number range to it which should be different from the other ledgers and that is what has been defined over here on the screen so now you can have saved the screen so that means the configuration for this particular uh, step has been completed and now we can go back so as we have moved to uh, to the SPRO path to the implementation guide path basically now this is the second step which we have completed and we can move to the third configuration step that is define document type for general ledger view so basically in this the difference between the entry view and the ledger view we already discussed in the entry view the document is always displayed in the sub ledger mode that is the the vendor code will be reflected to you the customer code will be reflected to you it will not reflect the ledger number or the account number to which actually that customer or the vendor is posted to but if you talk about the general ledger view the general ledger view is specific always specific to a ledger so specific to a ledger basically means that uh, the account number will always be displayed to you for each of the the different documents here basically you we define the document type for non leading ledger for documents in the general ledger view so again in this case we will be defining the document type for non leading ledger only at the same time we assign for each document type a number range so whenever you we talk about a document type obviously a document type needs to be assigned to a number range to be applied in the assignment of number document numbers so this document number range only this the number range decides what document number needs to be generated to that particular document posted in the SAP system so here we we just make to do the settings for the non leading ledger only when they have a different fiscal year variant in the company code from that of the leading ledger in the company code so the basic uh, this particular configuration stack basically has been used when the leading ledger and the non leading ledger have got different fiscal year variant so if there is a different fiscal year variant for leading ledger and that of the non leading ledger then in that case we need to define document types for non leading ledgers so that the non leading ledger documents can be posted with respect to a different fiscal year into the SAP system for non leading ledgers which have the same fiscal year variant as in the leading ledger in the company code the document numbers in the entry view remains the same to that of the document number in the general ledger view so defining your document types for whether for entry view or whether for general ledger view for non leading ledgers is done only in case they have got different fiscal years from that of the leading ledger so let's see how how we can assign a document type to the non leading ledgers when the fiscal year variant are different from that of the leading ledger fiscal year variant so moving on to the sap screen as you can see now the very next step is define document types for leading ledger view we need to go to the img part and we have to execute the symbol so as executed we can see now a pop-up screen gets generated to you on the screen and it asks you for the ledger now the ledger over here refers to the non-leading ledger mind it whenever we go for defining the ledger we are always define the ledger for non-leading part because the leading ledger is by defaulted already been assigned with this with the standard document type but non-leading is something which we create in the SCP system 
we created non-leading ledger like A1 and A2. So we need to define what document type need to be assigned to those non-leading ledgers part. So let's take the leading ledger over here. Uh, for our case, it is A1. Enter. And once I did so, it take me to the next screen as you can see. And now the screen is blank. That means the non-leading ledger A1 does not have any document type that means it does not have any document number range as well so if we go for posting any of the transaction for this ledger the system will not take it it will give you error so now to define the document type we need to go to new entries then we can take the document type over here suppose i take the document type as a b and on the other side we need, we need to define the number range so the number range is something which you need to create or you have to maintain in the system but we have not maintained it yet so to maintain the number range let's go a step back once more no and then you can go to this document number ranges expand and you will find the second option documents in general ledger view expand and then in this we need to go to the first step that is define document number ranges for general ledger view we need to execute this option so as to maintain the number range which will be ultimately assigned to the document type for general ledger view so executing this option now we need to give the company code 1200 and then go to change intervals and clicked and you can see now the number range is blank so we need to add the number range with going to this interval so click on to the interval and it will add a line to it as you can see so you need to define the serial number over here suppose I give the serial number as 01 I take the fiscal year 2015 now you need to take a a number range from and to which will be ultimately assigned to the document number while posting for this ledger non-leading ledger a1 so suppose I take the number over here as 9 5 times 0 to 9 0 0 9 9 9 so once you have taken a number range we can go and we can insert the number range and we can save it so you can see now that the serial number is 01 which is to be taken up going back to our previous configuration so now once we have maintained the number range now we can go back again to define the, uh, the document type for general ledger view okay taking the ledger a1 now we can again go to new entries to add our own ledger or document type over here so i have taken the document type a b you can have similarly you can have your own document type whether you want to take a b or s a or what different but the number ranges over here should be the one which has been maintained just in the previous step so over here we need to take the serial number of the number range that is 0, 01 which we have just defined or maintained in the system so this is how you need to take the document type and the number range for the non-leading ledger A1. So whenever a document will be posted, the number range, document number will be taken up from this range. So basically the need to define the document type for documents in the general ledger view depends only on whether the fiscal year variant of non-leading ledger differ from the fiscal year variant of the leading ledger in the company code on the other hand the document type definition is independent of which the type of ledger group to which the postings are made regardless of whether the posting are made without a ledger group or with a ledger group or whether postings are made to a ledger group with a leading ledger as a representative ledger so once you have maintained the document type and the number range we can go and we can click on to the save option and the number range will be assigned and you can take that in the request now continue
so this is how we have completed the configuration steps with respect to define document type for general ledger view so in the general ledger accounting the document number we define for the documents in the entry view needs to be different from those for the documents in the general ledger view so if you remember earlier we we defined the document type for general ledger view as well just a step back in a ledger so the number range which has been taken up in the entry view and the number range taken up in the general ledger view should be different it should not be same in any case so this is how we can cover the uh, cover up the document type and the different document types have been taken up over here the entry and the general ledger view so we are done with the document type part of the new new ledger accounting and now we'll move to the next part that is define segment segment is used for reporting analysis below the company code level the segments are used for segment reporting segment reporting gives a detailed look at the different activity areas of a company such as business division or products or market the segments are maintained at the client level segment is derived from a profit center recommended for prof for segment reporting in case there are too many profit centers so just to elaborate segment basically is used to divide your company into different levels so as to have a proper reports for them like a particular company can have different businesses so the different businesses can be divided in different segments probably a particular company can have uh, one as a retail business one it could have a different internet business just for an example if you take uh, any of the big company they, they have got uh, a retail business a petrochemical company or business in that they may have a separate business as well so what they can do is they can divide their businesses into different part on the basis of the segment so the company is same but the segments are divided as per the different businesses similarly you can also divide your products and the product can also be taken up as a segment and on the basis of the segment the product wise reports or financial statements can be generated even you can divide your market as a segment as well like within if you take it uh, you can take the asia asia business can be taken up as a seg separate segment similarly the the pacific part can be taken up as a different market segment so similarly you can divide your different different markets as well on the basis of the segment so it's depend as per the business requirement what kind of a requirement is there and accordingly the the segment is used with respect to that even if if any company has got a huge profit centers in controlling then even it is suggested to have different segments can be used within the profit center so ultimately the segments are triggered or are been taken up only through the profit center in sap you cannot directly take segment for posting whenever we we do transactions we take profit center and ultimately profit center master data are the one in which the segments are assigned so ultimately segments are triggered or are used only from the profit center side whenever a profit segment is used ultimately the segment will be hit on the basis of which profit center it is and what is the segment assigned to the profit center so again segment is a very very important uh, uh, part where the different reporting different businesses division wise reporting or product wise reporting can be done so now how we can create the segment and even the segment is taken up as a master data in the sap system but this is something which is created at the client level and this is something which is created only once while implementing the sap part so how we can create a segment 
the path is there on the screen to you you can go to this path and with the path we can create the segment in the SCP system so let's see how a segment can be defined so for segment we need to go to enterprise structure then definition and then financial accounting and define segment so we need to go to the enterprise structure over here just very next to SAP NetWeaver we can expand this enterprise structure over here and now you will find there is an options localized sample organizational unit definition assignment so we need to go to the assignment and we need to expand sorry we need to go to definition and we need to expand the definition part and within definition you will find financial accounting we need to expand the financial accounting and in that you can find that the second last option is define segment so in this screen you can go and you can define your segment again let's take a practical example if you are going to implement a particular different segments to a company like you can take a ABC company and it has got uh, a different businesses like it has got some telecom business with it it has got some retail business with itself and again it has got some different uh, uh, business like uh, manufacturing of some product type is there so these are three different businesses which it has now whenever the management needs report on the basis of these three different businesses what is the profit what are the sale what are the expenses and all it's tough to take those kind of a reports but if you are using segment in that case you can divide these three businesses the, the telecom can be taken as one of the segment as a business unit similarly the retail can be taken as another segment and the manufacturing can be taken up as a different segment and if you have divided these segments that means a company internally is divided into three different companies and these three different particular segment will be used for each of the transactions as per the profit center so as the profit center will be used for respective businesses respectively the segment will be assigned to them and ultimately the segment will be impacted properly and the proper reports can be generated for these different businesses business units so let's see how we can define it execute now suppose I go and I define over here as a new entries the same same three segment as we discussed suppose I take 1100 as telecom similarly I take 1200 as retail and 1300 as manufacturing And these are the three different businesses which have been taken as a three different segments so this is what the number you need to take what is the the nomenclature or the code you want to have and then you need to put the description to it and then you can go and you can save the entry and it will be saved to the request and your segment has been defined now we can go back and these segment can be used for the the particular business purposes similarly you can see now that there are different other segments already defined like government sales pharma retail services wholesale similarly a lot of different segments can be defined as per the different requirements so this is how you create segment and you can see when the segment is used basically for segment reporting so that you can divide your company into different segments and you can have their proper reporting at managerial level or at various different levels so that a proper details can be ha had for different businesses part so that is about the segment that we have covered so this is what you need to take up of and this is what the total configuration of no new GL accounting is all about so whatever till now we have discussed till this particular point the first second and third training session and then today these all basically refers to the configuration steps for new GL accounting
so you need to do these all configuration these all minimum configurations so that your new GL accounting works proper in the SAP system <coughs> if you don't do this then you will be probably getting different kind of an errors but again defining and going and analyzing those errors is something which will take much more time then better is to go through all these configurations one by one and once you have completed these all different configuration there are certain few configurations as well which you need to take up off but they are some uh, they are the configurations which are the same as that of the old classical version of SAP as well as the the new version of SAP but the different was the new GL that we have discussed so now we can you can have a look of the enterprise structure then the global settings and general ledger accounting so you can see on the screen these are some of the different configuration steps for enterprise structure you need to define the company code you need to define the company then you need to assign them business area created credit control area and then assigning the credit control area to the company code so these are the the prerequisite for the new GL accounting but we will not be discussing these enterprise structure configuration here because we already have covered enterprise structure configurations earlier you can you can refer to that particular training session of enterprise structure where these all steps have been taken up one by one but you must have to ensure that these configurations have already been done in the SAP system at the same time the new GL configuration is also been done then only you can go for posting the transactions in the, into the SAP system so enterprise structure is the one then financial accounting global setting where we define the fiscal year variant posting period variant defining the field status variants define group tolerance for users then assigning those to uh, to the users to to tolerance group and then assigning all of the above to the company code that means uh, assigning the fiscal year variant to the company code pro posting period variant to company code then assigning field status variant to the company code so ultimately you need to define these all variants and ultimately you have to assign those to the company code again this we have already covered in a separate training session of financial accounting global setting you can refer to that particular training session and you will find all these configurations in been discussed in detail in that particular part then the next few of the left configurations of general ledger accounting like creating chart of account then create account group document splitting for GL account defining routine earning count maintain number range creation of GL account and unit testing so you must have to take care that these configuration steps of enterprise structure then the global setting and general ledger accounting these three topics configurations needs to be done first as a prerequisite for new GL accounting so if you want to go for new GL accounting you have to take care that these three topic configurations are in place into the SAP system and then only you can go and start with the new GL configuration part and once you have done your new GL configuration part then we can move ahead and we can see how the the different transactions can be done in the SAP system on the basis of new GL accounting then how their new GL reports can be generated into the SAP system and all so do take care revisit to our earlier trainings been done for enterprise structure financial accounting global setting and general ledger accounting get these three configurations done and then move on to this new GL accounting which we have discussed and then only you will be in a place to have completed all the basic configurations and then you can move on to the unit testing part that is being discussed over here then only you can do the unit testing and you can look after the different new GL reports that we will be discussing so this is all about the, the the configurations with respect to the new GL and that is been done 
and you can revisit all of these configurations get this done into the system with creating your own company code and all these details configurations separately and once you are done with this then we will move to the next in the next trading session with the unit testing part and we'll see how these non-leading ledgers and leading ledgers reports on the basis of this segment and document splitting and all those things live while posting the transactions and the impacts so that is it for today's training session i hope you will uh, you will be going through these all steps these all topics enterprise structure then global setting and general ledger accounting part which has been covered earlier those particular sessions will give you much more understanding of the sap fico part as a basic configuration steps so we'll see you in the next training session till then thank you take care